all the different corners of the U.S. I grew up in Alaska, went down all the way to Georgia for, for college, um, now up on the Northeast Coast. I'm at uh, Rutgers, uh, finishing up med school, and uh, I'm going to be heading down to Baltimore for uh, interventional radiology um, residency in just a few months. I did not know you're from Alaska. That is awesome. Uh, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk uh, quickly about what is sketchy and what is blueprint. We'll talk, you know, sort of about how you might use them. Um, I'll talk a little bit about sketchy micro sort of in general, and then Pooja and with maybe some brief interjections from me, we'll walk you through a lesson on Legionella. Um, important organism to know, and we'll do a couple of questions. I think Pooja will have a couple of our questions, and then Camden has a, a big board style question from Blueprint. Uh, and then Jim will have a very special offer for you at the end. Uh, so I'll talk a, a little bit about what Sketchy is, uh, if you haven't used it already. Um, you know, hopefully you'll be able to tell from all these pictures, it's a visual learning resource. Uh, we're pretty proud that it's been used by more than half a million med students at this point. Um, I was one of them a long time ago, uh, as was Pooja a little bit less long time ago. Uh, and I think, you know, not just because we work here, but I think we can both say that it, it really works. It makes it makes the concept stick. It makes them last forever. It actually makes studying for step one fun, dare I say. Fun might be an exaggeration, but less awful. Uh, and most importantly, it makes your scores better. It makes pass rates on step one go up, the things you really care about. I don't want to talk too much about like the, the magic of it all because we're going to go through a lesson, but I think this is kind of interesting. Um, Sketchy honestly sort of stumbled onto this really, really ancient memory technique called the method of loci that basically involves hacking your sort of innate evolutionary ability um, in spatial memory to use for other things. Uh, and so the idea is a long time ago when we were all hunter-gatherers, we had to have a very good sense of, of where stuff was kept and stored and where danger areas were and so forth. And so we have a very strong spatial memory um, and we sort of graft these concepts onto it. And sort of the modern day example, I guess, is if you're hunter-gathering, you go to a grocery store. And if you think about the grocery store that you go to uh, most often, you can, I'm sure you can walk through that space in your mind. You know, you walk in the entrance, you know that the produce is over there and the dairy and ice cream and sweets are over there and, and the wine is over there and, and whatever. Um, and it's not because you made an Anki deck for your Whole Foods. It's because you just did that naturally because you have that sort of spatial memory. Um, and so we exploit that your your innate talent for that um, to help you remember, you know, microbiology and farm and immunology and all sorts of other stuff. Uh, you know, we're talking about step one today and we've got that extremely well covered micro farm path, you know, sort of the main stuff and then biochem anatomy, more of the basic science stuff as well. Um, really well covered with sketchy. We also have the the uh, clinical stuff covered. So once you're done with step and you're ready to go into the wards and, you know, take care of patients and actually start being a doctor, um, we've got you covered there too. And uh, stay tuned on that because we have some pretty exciting stuff coming on that front this summer. Uh, and then, you know, this is kind of, this is the question for Sketchy, right? Like there's essentially no other study resource where your friend, sibling, partner, parent, whatever, will look over your shoulder and be like, why are you wasting time? You're supposed to be studying for this life-changing test. Uh, and you'll be like, no, I, I really am. This Trust me, this works. Um, you know, if you're reading a textbook, everyone assumes you're, you're working hard. And so I think the question of like, what are our standards or sort of how serious is this gets brought up and, uh, you know, Pooja can attest to this to you. This is, this comes first. Before anything else, we want to make sure that we have scoped the information appropriately, that we're teaching you what you need to know, but not getting too far into the weeds. Um, and that we're teaching it clearly in a way that makes sense and where you'll understand it so that you can retain it. Um, we've got a bunch of doctors uh, around here and we also work with subject matter experts who are faculty um, at various med schools and practicing physicians uh, who, who work on our content with us. Um, we're constantly cross-checking things both with 
the other resources you use, first aid, you world, whatever, et cetera. Um, but we get <laughs> we get pretty in the weeds, uh, I would say. You know, we'll, we'll go pull primary sources and make sure that we understand something at a really fundamental level so we can back off and teach it to you at a slightly higher level, the, the one that's more appropriate, um, but make sure that we're uh, getting still the details right. Uh, and we're constantly going back through and, and updating old lessons and making sure that things are uh, correct in general and also, you know, current with the times. Medicine has changed a surprisingly large amount even since I was a med student uh, five or six years ago. So uh, it's a it's a constant process. So that's sketchy. And uh, Kim is going to tell you about Blueprint. Definitely. I just want to share a funny anecdote. Uh, about sketchy because I, I started medicine in 2015 and the other day I was on the wards you know this is my last rotation of med school and uh I actually had a question about like staph aureus that I was getting pimped on and I have not looked at the sketchy for staph aureus in literally five years and like the little picture popped up in my head I was like oh they got a the guy with the staff there's like a cat in the background it's like a desert scene it's a pyramid so it's just it's just kind of crazy how how this stuff sticks with you oh um, I guess the loci or loci um, uh, method method works. But anyway, um, I wanna talk a little bit about Blueprint. Um, so I'm from Blueprint, which is uh, previously called Med School Tutors. I'll be uh, brief here, but basically we're a one-on-one -on -one tutoring company. We are all folks that have been through med school, are in med school, are in residency, are attendings, and our basic objective is just to get you guys to where you need to be. Um, so uh, we've got a lot of resources available that I encourage you to check out. I won't dwell on them here, but there's a new um, free med school study planner. This is awesome because making a study plan for step one is a lot of work. And then you suddenly have like life that happens and gets in the way and you have to remake your entire study plan with one click of a button. Uh, the med school study planner kind of recalibrates itself for you. Um, outside of that, we do a lot of one-on-one -on -one tutoring. I have hundreds of hundreds of hours of tutoring with students um, some of my peers have thousands of hours tutoring with students. This is what we like to do. We like to work with you guys and try to get you to your goals. And then something that um, if we switch to the next slide, actually, this is something that we're really excited about. Um, Blueprint just put out a new um, step one uh, exam. It's a practice exam and it's a full length. It's actually like the exact same length as your actual step one uh, exam. And so I encourage you to check it out. Um, you just search on Google Blueprint. I'll put the link uh, in the in the chat, but basically it's a full exam um, to help you prepare for what you're gonna see on test day. Uh, and then of course, there's always a promo. There's always uh, some sort of, you know, uh, you know, a reward for sticking with us through this webinar. Uh, and that's that uh, stay until the end and we're gonna try to hook you up with a couple of hours of free tutoring uh, so that you can work with us at Blueprint. Uh, we're excited to meet you. We, yeah, it's funny that you mentioned that Staph Aureus lesson. My wife did that thing that I was talking about. I was studying for step one and she's like, why are you watching cartoons when this test you told me is going to determine the whole rest of our lives? I was like, no, it's real. Come look at it. And so she watched the the sketchy les lesson on Pastorella. And she's not a doctor. I mean, she's not a medical doctor. She doesn't like care about Pastorella. But to this day, she can tell me about that sketch. And that was like 10 years ago. So it, it really does stick for a long time. Uh, I'm going to talk a little about uh, the micro course at Sketchy because we're going to be talking about micro today. Uh, this was the the first course we ever made and sort of the one that, that grew the Sketchy love. Um, it's divided into four units, so bacteria, viruses, parasites, and fungi. Um, there's a, a whole ton of lessons in here. We try and hit uh, all the bugs you could reasonably be tested on. Um, Today, we're going to be talking about uh, Legionella, and, and Pooja will tell you more about that. But before we dive into the lesson, um, I wanted to talk quickly about the sort of micro themes, and I think Camden will, will know what I'm talking about here, too. So inside, uh, in the bacteria section uh, unit, everything is color-coded like broadly across the sketch to match whether the bug is gram-positive or gram-negative. So you can see um, Clostridium botulinum on the top there, is a gram positive organism. So that whole scene is sort of purple hued. And anytime in bacteria you see that kind of purple tone, you'll know we're talking about a gram positive organism. That's a great way to just sort of immediately orient yourself uh, in the sketch. And then same for 
uh, Burkle Daria below is uh, gram negative, so it's got those red tones. Um, it's sort of nice once you've watched the first couple of sketchy lessons, you start picking out little things just from the picture. You'll know sort of what's going on before the lesson starts. And then for viruses on the right side there, um, we do that same trick. So we color lessons in warm hues if there are RNA viruses and in cool hues if there are DNA viruses. And then because RNA has positive and negative sense, we also set the scene during the day if it's positive sense and during the night if it's negative sense. So again, it's a really easy way to, to sort of knock out some of those basic um, microbiological characteristics and identify what's going on in the scene even before you hear the first word out of Andrew's mouth at 2x speed. Um, cool, before we jump into Legionella, someone asks, is there any trick to manage the microbiology workload? It's a good question. I don't know, curious what, what y'all think about this. Can I actually jump in on that on that one? That's a that's a great question. And and I think something that I run into with my students is that it feels like you're drinking from a fire hose. I think particularly from microbes. A lot of facts, uh, and maybe a little bit less conceptual, um, at least historically, relative to something like cardio. And I think the big thing is to have some sort of scaffolding, have some organizational structure to put all the information in your brain, whether or not that's gram negative, gram positive, and then you like kind of bin everything in gram negative, gram positive when you do with bacteria. And then you kind of work down the subcategories from there. But it's having some scaffolding, and there's lots of different types of scaffoldings, but having some scaffolding um, that uh, works for you, I think is the is the best first step. I don't know, Pooja if, or, or Ben, if you have other ideas. Yeah, totally. I, I think that's great. I think the other sort of like, big picture answer I would give is, and this is not as helpful to those of you who said you have step one in April, but um, start early. So if you're taking step one next year, you know, start going through some of this content now, uh, especially a great thing about Sketchy is that, you know, as Camden just told you, it will stick for a long time. And so just because you watch a video now doesn't mean you're going to have to rewatch it again in a year. There, are, we have review cards and sort of ways to shortcut that. Um, but I think the more that you're able to to do the work while you're working your way through your micro block or your farm, you know, the farm part of your cardio block or your renal block or whatever, um, the, the better off you'll be. That said, that's very much a do as I say, not as I do thing. So if your test is in April or May, like that's how I did it. I just like crammed all this micro stuff uh, and it worked out fine. So uh, I think either way you'll be good. Uh, and it looked like we just, is Pooja back? She's back. Nice. Okay, cool. Pooja, you ready to, to take us through Legionella? Hi. Yes, I am. Sorry. I don't know what just happened. The internet. <laughs> the internet. Yeah, that, that's what happened. So actually, speaking of like scenes that we all vividly remember to this day, Legionella happens to be one of those for me. But um. I don't know about you guys, but when I hear Legionella, the first thing I think of is a legion of World War One style battleships. So we're going to be focusing on one of these as we'll hear. Um, we'll have the ship be red and rusty because technically Legionella is a gram negative bacillus, but it actually doesn't take up gram stain all that well. So to visualize it, you need a silver stain. We're going to add a fresh coat of silver paint to our battleship here to remind you that while technically gram negative, it needs silver stain to be visualized. Also, uh, Legionella is oxidase positive, meaning it has this enzyme called cytochrome C oxidase that produces a change in color on the oxidase test from colorless to blue. So you see this couple that we have sitting here on the plank? Well, we'll have our girl wearing our oxidase positive blue ring to remind you of this. And uh, now the so World War One era. Jump in oh, here really quick. Yes, go ahead. Uh, that oxidase positive ring. That's one of those sort of recurring symbols I was talking about, where you'll start to see that in a sketch, and you'll immediately know, like, oh, I see the blue ring. This is an oxidase positive bug. Like before anybody actually tells you anything about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the more you work through micro, the more those will just come to you naturally. Um, but yeah, so the World War One era was actually the last era we used coal power battleships and this actually will help us remember our auger requirements for legionella 
So Legionella needs to be grown on buffered charcoal yeast extract in the presence of cysteine and iron. We'll have these heaping piles of coal here, um, this iron anchor, and we'll name our battleship the SS Cysteine to remind you of these auger requirements of buffered charcoal yeast extract or BCYE auger. Now in terms of clinical features, Legionella causes two diseases that you should know of. Legionnaire's disease, which is very serious, potentially and something less severe known as Pontiac fever. So we'll talk about Pontiac fever first. This one's characterized by fever and malaise, and it's usually self-limited. To represent this, we'll have this old car you see on the left with its hood popped open, the steam coming out. Uh, this is made to look like an old Pontiac, and the steam should remind you of Pontiac fever. Legionnaire's disease, on the other hand, this one's a severe form of pneumonia caused by Legionella, and it's one of the atypical pneumonias, as are mycoplasma and chlamydophila pneumoniae. On chest x-ray, Legionnaires classically demonstrates this patchy infiltrate that uh, consolidates to one lobe. So we'll represent this unilobar infiltrate on this blueprint. You see this sailor that's kind of leaning against the car. He's holding up this blueprint of the ship. Um, and you can kind of tell that that blueprint is made to look like the lungs. Um, he's looking for the cargo storage and the cargo is highlighted on just one segment of one of those levels to remind you of one lobe. Um, Chest X-ray, unfortunately, is highly variable, so you cannot rely on just this for diagnosis. Um, but there are a lot of unique characteristics to the clinical presentation of Legionnaires that can help point you towards this as opposed to some of the other atypical pneumonias. So Legionnaires can actually induce electrolyte disorders like hyponatremia. We'll have a sailor moving a big pile of salt onto the ship across that plank in the back. But as you can see, the wheelbarrow is tipping over, salt is spilling out into the water, and he's losing salt. So um, this should remind you of like, if a question stem describes a pneumonia, it gives you a BMP, train yourself to look at the sodium level. And if it's less than 130, think of Legionella. Next clinical clues are a patient with pneumonia who's experiencing neurologic symptoms like headache and confusion. We'll have this guy who's painting the ship accidentally knocking a paint can over and you can see that that paint can is now hitting the sailor below him on the head and he's gripping his head sort of in pain. Uh, this should remind you of the neurologic symptoms of headache and confusion. Uh, diarrhea, nausea, and vomiting are also common extra pulmonary manifestations of legionnaires. So if you have this, if you have a question stem of a patient presented with pneumonia, hyponatremia, diarrhea, sufficient to say for this board question, Legionella is probably the culprit. Um, you'll see that brown paint that we have uh, from the can, can that was knocked over all over this other sailor's pants, and this should remind you of diarrhea. Okay. And the lactum, which is a lot less, <laughs> yeah, uh, much less specific, but patients with Legionnaires often present with high fever, often greater than 39 degrees Celsius or roughly like 102 degrees Fahrenheit. So in order for our coal-powered ship to work, someone has to scoop coal into the furnace and We'll see that sailor who's sort of sweat, sweating and looking super feverish. That should remind you of high fevers. And um, Legionnaire's disease is more commonly, uh, more commonly occurs in smokers. So you see that sailor that we have against the old Pontiac. He's um, smoking to remind you of this. Um, so now let's say you... Uh, sorry. So now let's say you have a clinical presentation of a smoker with pneumonia, hyponatremia, headache, all of the alarm bells are going off for Legionnaire's disease. What lab tests do we run? So while a sputum culture is obviously something you definitely want to order, that can take three to five days. And luckily there's a rapid urine antigen test that can establish the diagnosis. We'll add the sailor here peeing into the water to remind you of our urine antigen test. Um, and obviously every scene has to have someone peeing. Um, how to treat it, uh, just like the other atypical pneumonias, you can use macrolides. We'll draw our recurring, another recurring symbol here at Sketchy is our macrolide crows. Um, however, fluoroquinolones are also suggested to have um, fewer complications when treating Legionnaires and are equally as effective. So to remember this, we are including um, that little couple sitting on the first plank. We'll have the sailor handing the flower to the girl to remind you of fluoroquinolones. Uh, yeah. yeah, and actually- I'll... That, um, oh, that fluoroquinolone ahead. flower and those macrolide crows, uh, 
those pop up a lot. Um, and so again, you know, you start to get used to seeing like, oh, there's a flower in the scene. I already know I'm treating how I'm treating this bug. Oh, there's I see some crows flying overhead. Like, great, I'm gonna give some azithromycin. Um, mm. and start developing that instinct. And that kind of gets to a little bit of the scaffolding. Someone asked earlier about like, how do you compartmentalize all this information? Those sort of memory hooks are are huge for that. So if you can latch onto those memory hooks, it goes a long way. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. One thing that we try pretty hard to do is to, you know, I think it's, it's easy to see hopefully how, you know, you can start to reconstruct the scene in your mind and pull all the details out. But one thing that I think isn't quite so easy to see from looking at an isolated sketch is like when you're staring at a multiple choice question and you know the answers the answer choices are like seven different bugs like how do you pull those sketches up in your mind and so we try and give you that initial hook that helps you connect the scene to the bug right so legionelle legionnaires disease like you're thinking about something sort of military these battleships like hopefully get you there um and for each scene we try and think of some key association that will help you get back to the scene quickly so that you can then pull out the specific detail that you need. Uh, cool. Uh, so a couple of folks have asked about the review card. So let's see, let's see if this works. This is a, a video of the review card in action. So you can kind of see How it works. I think this is great for for two things. Um, one is especially if it's been a little while since you watched the video, uh, and you're like, "Oh right, Staff Aureus. That was the one with you know Moses. He had his staff, uh, but I don't remember like all the specific details about the clinical conditions that staff can cause." This is a really easy way to quickly go back through without having to watch the video or like scrub to the the part of the video that you want to find. Uh, the thing that I used it for more often, in part maybe because I was using it in a very compressed timeline because I'm a procrastinator, as I have already admitted to, um, is there would be like one thing that I, I was like, I know there was like a symbol there, but for some reason I've like lost that one piece of the art. And going back and just finding that one thing is is really satisfying and easy. Um, and again, you don't have to sort of move the video timeline around to find exactly what you were talking about. Uh, all right, cool. Should we do some questions? Everybody loves questions, right? Uh, we'll start with a couple of, of uh, simpler, sketchy questions, and then we'll do a, a blueprint. Big boy. Sounds good. Um, so I'll with one of the sketchy questions for this lesson, what are the primary components found in the growth media auger for Legionella? A, glucose and lactose, B, sodium chloride and peptone, C, buffered charcoal yeast extract, cysteine and iron, and or D, dextrose, peptone, and bile salts. So I can already see some people answering. Uh, if you can put it in the chat to everyone, let's see what we all think. I think there's consensus. I, I think we got a critical mass here. A, a, <laughs> yeah, um, so exactly. So if you recall from the sketch that we reviewed approximately 48 seconds ago, um, <laughs> the, the ship, we have the piles of coal, the iron anchor, and the name of the battleship, the SS Sistine, which should remind you of these auger requirements. Which is a really sweet so in terms of to be honest. Sorry, what did you say, Ben? <laughs> it's a really sweet name for a battleship, in my opinion. Not it is. Battleship it named flows really well. Acids, so. <laughs> if I owned a ship, I would name it the yeah. SS. <laughs> um, okay, so the next question we have for you, which of the following diseases is not caused by Legionella? A, bronchitis, B, Pontiac fever, C, Legionnaire's disease, or D, pneumonia? Nice. Okay. Yeah, perfect. So if you recall, we have that old Pontiac with the steam, the hood popped open and the steam coming out for Pontiac fever. And then we also have the smoking guy holding up the chest x-ray looking like a blueprint of the ship. And then also the various clinical features that we symbolized throughout the sketch to remind you of 
pneumonia, uh, Legionella causing an atypical pneumonia and Legionnaire's disease, which is that more severe disease. And so yeah, the correct answer is bronchitis. And speaking of blueprint of a ship, let's turn to Camden's question from Blueprint. Yeah. <laughs> this one's a little bit longer, but I encourage you, um, everyone, as you think about this question, I'll read through it in a second. Um, I'm actually going to use this as an opportunity to teach a little bit about how to approach this, you know, these long style questions. But I want you to picture the Legionella ship in your mind. Picture what we just did with Sketchy. Have that in your mind because a lot of those facts are going to show up here. It's going to help us get the answer right. Very first thing when you approach this long board style question, a lot of information. I ignore the labs, chest x-ray, any of that. I put that over here to the side. And the very first thing I look at is the final final part of the vignette, which is the question. Let's see about my annotation here. Uh, right here. Which of the following is the most appropriate test? Okay. Then I skim the answers real quick and I say, what on earth are they asking me about? Am I talking cardio? Am I talking palm? What, what sort of organ system am I working with? And here I know I'm working with Mike. So we're going to look at some micro diagnostic test. Now we jump into the question. So the key thing is always figuring out what are the facts? And this is what I love about how to incorporate sketchy, which is we have a uh, 67 year old man. He's brought to the ED. He's not brought to an outpatient clinic. He's sick. He's brought to the ED. He is diarrhea, fever, non-productive cough for four days. Timeline is critical. This is not something that happened in the last 24 hours. It's not something that's been going on for months at a time. It is four days, which makes me start to think that this is like right up there with an infectious pathology. Over the last day, he's become short of breath and increasingly confused. So now I know not only do I have lungs, you know, are, are my lungs are compromised, my GI system is compromised, but I now have my neuro system as well is also starting to be compromised as I have confusion. He's had four episodes of watery diarrhea per day over the last four days. That's a fair amount. He has a history of COPD. So he has a history of a chronic lung condition. And he has smoked one pack of cigarettes daily for at least 30 years. You can see those little factoids from the sketchy starting to pop up. We've got a smoker. We've got diarrhea. We've got like a 70-year-old person. We've got neuro. We've got GI involvement. We've got fever. Everything is coming together. He's in mild distress. So he's sick, but he's not acutely, you know, not like, you know, keeling over right now. And uh, he is confused, oriented only to person. His temperature, I actually don't know Celsius very well, but I assume that's a high temperature in Fahrenheit. Uh, his heart rate is, you know, the rest of his vitals are fine, basically. On physical exam, he has coarse, diffuse crackles. That's a big thing. Always think, is it diffuse or is it localized? Do I have a very central, you know, uh, lateralized pneumonia or do I have something that is across the lungs bilaterally, which is what we have here. Lab study, laboratory studies show the following. And everyone in the audience, what sticks out to you about these lab findings? There's one big thing that we just talked about. I'll give it a second. Nice, Emily. Nice, Patricia. Good job, Tracy. Oh, everyone's right on it. Exactly. We have this hyponatremia. Just like Ben was saying earlier and Pooja, I think both were saying that under 130 sodium, but that's a hyponatremia that we really are starting to be concerned about Legionnaire's disease in the setting of confusion, in the setting of diarrhea, in the setting of an older person in the setting of a smoker, in the setting of someone with pneumonia. So you can start to be like, okay, this guy has pneumonia, probably from Legionella. So now we rephrase the question. All this question is asking us then is, which of the following is the best diagnostic test for Legionella pneumonia? I'm gonna give it a second, let people answer. Okay, we're getting a lot of ease. Good, I like it. And now picture back in your head. What was the picture we just looked at? What, what on that sketchy vignette gave us the answer E that a lot of people are wanted to choose? And while you're thinking about what on the vignette gave us that answer, I'm going to talk about the other answers. Blood culture, we're thinking more sepsis. We're thinking like, uh, you know, something that's infecting everything else. Um, CT scan, that's not really going to help us. That's not very specific. Sputum gram stain could 
does a bunch of stuff, but it's not really going to be sensitive for Legionella. Stool culture, this is a more C. diff. And then urine antigen assay. Exactly. This is going to be our sailor who is peeing off into the ocean. I think we have a picture of it here. Boom. And that is our, going to be our urine antigen assay. So basically, Legionella uh, leads to some very specific um, urine findings that, like we just talked about. Um, and so one of the best tests to diagnose Legionella is going to be through a urine antigen assay. Nice. Good work, everyone. Heck yeah. Yeah, this is a great question. I think it's sort of a classic board style question where it's really, it's really a, a two in one, right? Like the question is first, what bug are we talking about here? What is the diagnosis? Um, and then it asks you the real question, which is how do you, how do you make that diagnosis? Uh, and I think, you know, we, we cheated a little because we put this question in a lesson about after a lesson about Legionella. So you sort of had a clue of what the bug was going to be already, but this is sort of what makes board questions hard is you have to figure out two things. In them. Definitely. And that's like one of the ways to approach them is like the very first thing you have to do is be like, what on earth am I talking about? Am I talking about micro or am I talking about something else different? And so starting with scanning the answers and looking at that question at the very end of the vignette is a good way at least to basically frame what you're going to next go through the question to try to figure out. Um, awesome. Yeah. We'll open it up for questions before we do our, our little giveaway. Um, and feel free to throw stuff in the chat or in the, the Q and a feature of zoom. One thing that I can do, uh, while we're waiting for some questions. And while you're looking that up too, if you don't have any questions, at least tell us, you know, where are you, where are you joining us from? Are you at a U.S. med school? Are you international? Are you on vacation? Tell us a little bit, bit about yourself in the chat. Egypt, awesome. Wow. Amazing. Canada, great. India, UK. Jersey. Jersey, there we are. I'm right there. I'm probably right down the road from you or up the road, <laughs> wherever you are. NorCal. Anyone from the good California? Or, uh... Sorry, Pooja. Oh. <laughs> Average. Um... <laughs> uh, I just thought I'd show sort of how this works actually in the platform. So here's our video, which takes you through all the stuff we just did. This is the quiz. And so you can see... Um, well, we just answered this one. And so you can see how these are not are sort of intended to be simpler, right? This is the exact same question that uh, we just did with Camden. It's just a sort of a simpler, more streamlined version. Oh, I love that, though. That's huge. Like, that's a great example. Like, that is how these board questions work, is that they just add a bunch of words to confuse you, confuse you and kind of stress you out. When really all, as someone who's written board style questions, like my objective when I write it is kind of to confuse, confuse you a little bit and like stress you out. And then you can't get to the right answer. And then if you take a step back and you simplify it, you're like, oh, they're just asking me what's, you know, how do I diagnose legionnaires? And so I encourage you to kind of take that little mental gap when you're approaching these questions. Um, yeah, this is a cool one. This is one we didn't answer. Uh, let's say this is A, B, C, D. Throw your your proposed answer in the chat for this one see if you remember back to the sketch yeah heck yeah that coat of silver paint on the rusty ship uh this one we did this one up uh, and we we just talked about with cam then we do have a good question that's just posted in the chat um, is it true that diffuse pneumonia equals interstitial, which would be Legionella, whereas localized pneumonia equals lobar, which would be something like strep pneumo? And the, the, the short answer, I think, is Samira, is that um, not quite. I like that you're compartmentalizing things and you're kind of putting things into bins, but atypical pneumonias, which can be due to Legionella or 
mycoplasma uh, uh, pneumoniae, any of those are a little bit more bilateral, diffuse. And then there's typical pneumonias, which is like strep pneumo, um, and that's going to be more our lower single, you know, acute onset lower pneumonia. And so you're right on the right track, but there's some other bugs that can also, also cause these illnesses. Yeah, which is part of also why the board questions are so darn long, right? You can't make a diagnosis based, in general, you can't make a diagnosis based on one single detail. And so any particular fact increases the probability in one direction and the more of those you put together, right? So like all that stuff can and was underlined. There's diarrhea and there's pneumonia and there's neurosymptoms and there's a high fever and there's hyponatremia. If you start putting it all together, any one of those might just be incidental or, or have a different cause, but um, the combination is pretty compelling. Yeah, this kind of ties back into someone asked in the Q&A for practice, should I read the full vignette? Um, because some questions can be solved from the last one to two sentences. And I I also used Camden's approach that um, he talked about as he worked through the board style question to look at the last line, look at the answer choices and sort of determine what you're looking for, then go back into the question stem. But um, like we've mentioned, there are so many uh, different things that can point you towards uh, one of the eight The other is just kind of to, uh, as you go through the sketches, um, that I think is really useful in practice as well. Um, cool. Anyway, that was a fun little, fun little trip through, uh, sketchy land. Uh, Jen, you want to take it from here? Sure. So I did see a majority of you all have not purchased Sketchy in the past. So definitely have an exclusive discount here for all the attendees. If you would like to get started with a Sketchy Medical subscription, here's 15% off uh, of our 6, 12, or 24 month plans. The link is exclusive to you guys and will expire tomorrow at midnight PST time. Um, I'll put the link in the chat so you have it, but I'll also include it in the post webinar follow up email so you can also access it there. The other thing um, on here, if you currently have a paid subscription that's active, this unfortunately will not work for you. This is just for new and expired paid accounts only. So just, just FYI for everyone here. So definitely take advantage. Um, and then we can go on and uh, run the, the raffle winner. So I'll take over the, sh the screen share, but what we are giving away is a, a one month access to Sketchy Medical and also the, the two hour tutoring session uh, on the blueprint side. So how we're gonna do this is I have up on my screen, um, let me, oh, there you go. I have the export of the poll respondents uh, in the beginning. And then there's, so there's 72 of you guys here. I know some of you all have left. So we have around like 60 joining us now. I'll generate a number and whichever line that lands on, you will be the winner. Uh, but we definitely want to make sure that you are still here with us. So if you are called, say hi in the chat. So we know you're still here with us. All right, let's go. <clears throat> all right, 72. So that's the, the last person that joined us. Let's see who you are. Uh, so the last person is Dinu Babu. Dinu Babu. D-I-N-U-B-A-B-U. Yes. Congrats. On the first try this time. <laughs> oh, there you go. Congratulations. I mean, last time we had to go through like five folks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or we're getting super competitive. Congrats. In the nice. Yeah. Congratulations, Dino. We will be in contact. I have your email address. And um, yeah, thanks for, for joining us and winning. And thank you, everyone else.
hope this and I wanted to put my uh, my contact information um, in like feel free to literally send me an email directly for everyone out there um, just if you have any questions about step one prep like tis the season like we're right in the middle of step one right now feel free to reach out to any of us um, because our objective for all of us I think is just to get you to pass this exam get over that hurdle and just crush it and so um, feel free to reach out to any of us about any questions that you have. We'll put you in contact with the right people and, uh, we'll go from there and good luck for everyone. Yeah. Questions about step one, questions about clinical year, questions about difficult Foley placement. I got you, you know, <laughs> <laughs> questions, questions about residency match process. Yeah. I just went through it. It's a beast. So feel yeah, free to reach Camden out. just lived that nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, likewise, my email is my username in this chat, so, or in this Zoom, Pooja Jadani, dot Jadani, I've got you, so feel free to message me as well. Oswaldo, uh, to answer your question, that giveaway was for the two-hour blueprint tutor tutoring session and the one month sketchy medical access. So one person, one, two things. We and also well, feel free to reach out to me. Just shoot me an email too, and I can put you in the front office to see if we can um, you know, I get you some additional tutoring if you're interested as well. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you all. I know there's some additional questions, I think. Yeah, I'll, I'll hang around for a sec to see. Yeah, well, we'll be here uh, for a couple of minutes. If anyone else has some last questions, we can pull up another lesson. We ended early this, this time around, but want to be here for the full hour. Ending early is like the best thing that can ever possibly happen in med school. So yeah. <laughs> As someone who's post-match having to go into the ICU for the last week, the couple of days at the residence were like, go home. I was like, yes. <laughs> Just remember to pay it forward. <laughs> yes. Always. Yes, Nina, this session is being live streamed on YouTube. So you will also get that link in the recap email as well. I'll, I'll drop it in here for you if you would like it right now. Mm -hmm. cool. Seems like we don't have any questions coming in. Oh, heck yeah. Virology. Ooh. Love it, Nia. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, hello to your other classmates and friends as well. Thanks for joining. We were actually, um, like I said, I was on the floors this last week and Sketchy came up. I'm not kidding. We're just all there sitting in this, you know, this patient who's a critical, critically ill you know, individual. And we're like, what on earth could this bug be? What, like, what, you know, there's so many different bugs and we all were, like, trying to remember all the different microbio for pneumonia in a critically ill patient. And someone pulled up the sketchy for, like, pseudomonas and the sketchy for, like, staph aureus and strep pneumo. And we went through it together and it was, uh, it was, everyone there was under 40. And so I think all of us had studied with sketchy. That's amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, for the folks who are still on, um, we we do have an ambassador program so if you are a huge sketchy fan would love to help us spread the word email me i just put the the email address in the chat and we can get you started so we're definitely looking to expand the program so a special shout out for that and another special shout out actually for that that step one mock exam i was talking about from blueprint the other day oh just so you guys know one thing that's really cool about it is that um, you can directly ask the people who wrote the questions, your questions. So if you actually like are doing the like 280 questions, 
Um, you can, uh, through the chat feature on the website, you literally ask to be put in contact with the test write writers and they put you in contact with the physicians directly who've written these, you know, who are the content experts for this material. So if you find something that you're like, I'm not sure about, or I want to learn more about it, you can be put directly in contact with those individuals. So it's worth a shot. It's worth checking out. Um, so I put that link in there earlier. Feel free to, feel free to take a gander at it. All right, yeah. Cool, so I don't see any more questions. Thank you so much, Camden, Ben, Pooja, for hopping on. Thank you everyone else who's still on. We will catch you at the next one.